think we should get started. So I want to welcome everyone. And as I've been saying for uh, almost two years, someday we'll gather again in person. But thank heavens for Zoom, because otherwise we couldn't do these and we couldn't have such meetings and presentations. I want to thank our speakers, Jamie Marshall, Chairperson of Kids Education Yes, and Tom Moore, Superintendent of Great Falls Public Schools, for being with us tonight. We all have questions about the effects of COVID on our public schools and how it has changed teaching methods, sporting events, normal gatherings of students and has caused uncertainty for our staff, administration, students and our public. Tom and Jamie will discuss some of the problems called by, caused by the pandemic and how federal and state funding is being utilized to address these problems. For those of you who are not familiar with KEY, Kids Education Yes, Advo they are advocates for a strong school system, educates voters on school funding issues, and mobilizes community resources to ensure adequate funding for Great Falls Public Schools. Jamie has been chairing KEY since fall of 2018. We certainly thank her for that. Thank you, Tom and Jamie, for joining us tonight. Our speakers will answer questions at the end of the program. Please put your questions in the chat room and the moderator will repeat them. We ask that your questions be thoughtful and, and civil. I have a couple announcements, actually three. Um, Wild Montana Film Festival is streaming now through February 7th. Go to wildmontana.org for more information and to purchase tickets. Great Falls Public Schools High School Art Show is Thursday, February 10th from 4 to 5.30 p.m. in the Dark Horse at the Celtic Cowboy. It's free and open to the public, and I know that the the kids will be there and they would love to have people from the public come and see their artwork. Then what is the 1972 Montana Constitution and how is it constructed? Great Falls Rising is celebrating the 50th anniversary of this historic event on Thursday, February 23rd at 6 p.m. on Zoom. Join us to hear the stories of the delegates to the convention and the work they accomplished. Go to our website, greatfallsrisingmt.org for more information. So without further ado, Jamie, thank you very much and you're on. Thank you, Jerry, and thank you to Great Falls Rising for all you do to support our community. I am going to share my screen here in just a minute. I think it's telling me I can't quite yet. So just one minute here and we will get the slides going. Many of you I recognize or know, it's great to see you and a few of you I don't know. So I grateful to have you here tonight and hope we can enjoy our time together. It's still telling me that my screen sharing is disabled. Um, check it again, Jamie. Oh, we're there. This is great. All right. Can you there see you that? Go. We good? All right, I'm seeing some head nodding. Wonderful. As Jerry said, I currently serve as chair of Kids Education. Yes, this has been a great opportunity for me. I am a mom here in the community. My husband and I are small business owners. We've been here a little over a decade and all three of our children have been born here in Great Falls and all three now are in elementary school at one of our local schools. So we are grateful to be a part of the Great Falls Public School community. And I've really enjoyed the opportunity to be part of Kids Education, yes. Let's see if I can get this to go. Here we go. Hold on. We'll go a little slower. There we are. Jerry already shared our mission statement. I just wanted to highlight a couple of things from it. First and foremost, it's important to know that key is not something brand new. We have actually been around since the early 90s. We are a PAC or a political action committee. And I am always grateful to acknowledge that I certainly am carrying on a tradition that has been here for decades. Our community has been known for its passion and commitment to public education, and that certainly has not changed now. The mission of KEY over the years has been developed, as Jerry said, but I like to emphasize that we advocate, we educate, and we mobilize, all in support of public education right here in Great Falls. I also like to share at this moment in time, as we continue to live through these unique COVID years, KEY to me is like a marathon. Um, I actually have been a runner. This is the Boston Marathon. I actually did my graduate work in Boston. It has a special place in my heart. I have stood there in Copley Square. And over the last few years, as I have watched and cheered and at times even cried with many of the leaders in our community who are striving so hard to keep education in our community moving through this, 
I realized key really to me are the marathon runners. Um, so many people are having to sprint right now, really keep up with what's going on in the moment. Key's mission, as you can see there, is to be that slow and steady, keep it up, reach the long, long haul of continuing to keep that funding steady over the years, each and every year for our school system. A little bit of a lag, but we're coming here. Give me a second, here we go. Um, in 2020, I think one of the most recent things Key is grateful to have been a part of was the passage of the mill levy here in our community. They said yes to a 1.75 plus million levy. That happened in the midst of COVID. It had been 10 years that we had only passed two levies. So our district had seen a significant number of cuts. More than $10 million had been cut, which translates to over 100 teaching positions. We knew that it was past time that something had to change. We were grateful to partner with so many, including many of you on this call to make that happen. It was nearly a two year effort. Large steering committee, um, many community members, businesses, folks stepping up to the plate to really educate our community. One of the greatest things I think that came out of that too was we were able to really learn and assess where our community was at with public education. And well over 90% of our community loud and clear said, we really support public education. We just don't always understand that maybe there's issues or concerns or that even more funding is needed. And that's really helped to guide the direction of Key over the last few years. We are trying to really hone in on simple, concise messaging and really sharing the stories for our community to grasp and understand. We also are working awfully hard, as I know all of you are as well, to give shout outs and support and appreciation to all of the folks, the staff, the teachers and the administrators that are continuing to keep our schools open. We were grateful to partner in October with the Treasure Our Teachers initiative that occurred here in Great Falls. It started as an idea actually from a parent and she came to a few of us in the community and said, we've got to do something. And it just exploded. Um, this community really said loud and clear, we truly do treasure our teachers and staff. And we continue to look for ways to be able to share that message. What I want to focus on for the next few minutes of my time though, before I turn it over to Tom, is an acronym that if this is the only thing you remember me saying tonight, please remember it. And I know I'm speaking to the choir for a number of you on this call. You're probably really familiar with this acronym but it is OTO, that's what I want you to remember tonight, which stands for one time only. About a year ago, I started down my journey of better understanding the history and the current um, application of OTO for my own family, for our community, really for our nation as a whole. This refers to funding. So if you're talking about the ARPA money, or if you've heard of ESSER, or if you've heard of the CARES Act, any of what feels like alphabet soup, all of these letters that are associated with the federal COVID relief funds that have been coming into our community and state, ultimately, those are all what can also be referred to as one-time only funds, OTO. And what that means is that money's coming in and it's been a fair amount of money, which is wonderful in many ways, helping us to address the direct impacts of COVID. However, that money will run out by about 2024. And when it goes away, there isn't more of it coming. Our community experienced this again a little over a decade ago after the 2008 um, recession in our community, in our, our country, really. Uh, there was a lot of federal COVID, or not federal COVID, there was a lot of relief dollars that came. And by 2010, we started to struggle passing levies in our community. So Key has really looked historically at what occurred in that time frame, and we are working really hard to educate our community moving forward that these OTO dollars, though they are large in number right now, and though they do have great benefits, they are one time only or OTO funds, meaning once expended, once their timeline runs out, there's no more money coming in to support those teaching positions, to support those programs, to support those changes that were made. And then it falls back on us as a community to decide what is most important and how we are going to be able to financially support that. We as key have started breaking down in collaboration with the district to better understand as parents and community members what these OTO funds are really being spent on. Some of them have already been expended. Uh, we've been in COVID now for two years. There are a few more years of them though too. So we have kind of in our own way, and you'll see looking for those, as I mentioned, really simple messaging, simple ways to share back with our community the stories, kind of five different categories that we currently are looking at, which is student support. We know our community is super, super, really attuned and wanting to support students, as well as teachers. We know those teachers and staff are really important. Also looking at health and sanitation, 
um, technology. We certainly were in the 21st century, but COVID has pushed us ever further into recognizing how to incorporate appropriately technology into the learning opportunities and then building improvements. Um, those might look a little different than some of us might think, but that's HVAC. A lot of this we can't see that is related to these COVID relief funds. Something that I like to mention as well, related to all of this OTO, some of it seems really generic, you know, sanitation related to like hand sanitizer and things, but some of it also has become very innovative. And Tom and the district will speak much more to that. But I know for me as a parent and as a community member, that's some of what I've become quite excited about with these OTO funds is seeing what our district is really doing in more unique and innovative ways. Um, I read an article just this morning from a, an education think tank that said, is COVID going to be the catalyst to help us to think differently and address some of the challenges that public education had? I, for one, as a parent, and I'm excited to say, I'm really starting to see that in our district, that some of these OTO funds are being used to think a little differently, to look at things a little differently, and to help us for the long haul, even after these OTO funds go away. Here's a few short messages and pieces of facts I wanted to share back with you. This is data we received from the district um, late fall. So it's ever changing and we're working with them on about a three to five month basis to update this data because it is constantly changing. But a few things, you know, 1,588 students received remote learning last academic year. I love this meme, um, even because of what we experienced last week. Um, again, I have three kids in the district. All three of them were home for remote learning. We were playing the four of us all needing a device at the same time game, going through all the things that everyone in our community was. But I can tell you, it was powerful to watch our children learn last week. Um, they didn't stop learning. They really didn't. And that included the relationships they had with their teachers. My husband stopped in at lunch for a minute and he tapped me on the shoulder and he said, look over there. And our seven-year-old was sitting at this very computer with this ginormous grin on her face because her teacher had just signed into Zoom. And you could see the joy. You could see that collaboration. She was so excited. And he said, they're really not, they're not, she's still learning, Jamie. And I said, you better believe she is. So I think that's an important thing for our community to recognize. Well, then I have to click the right button. Here we go. Um, another thing that I think is really imperative are the six mental health therapist counselors that have been hired by our district. This is part of that innovative approach. Um, I had the opportunity to be with some national folks in our community recently related to a different initiative, looking at the number of children exposed to drugs in our community. And as this national group was here doing some learning and looking at what we're doing, I mentioned to them, actually I didn't, one of the staff from the district mentioned it first, that our district had used some OTO funds to hire six additional therapists to help address the social emotional needs. This national group looked at me and said, can we be sharing this idea nationally? This is really exactly what these funds should be used for, to look for collaborative partnerships with other organizations, utilize these OTO funds to really stimulate bringing in the needs and the resources for the students in this unique time. And this is something happening right here in Great Falls Public School. Related to our teachers, 48 teachers and staff provided remote learning last academic year. That's a lot. That was a lot of work. We've had 10 intervention teachers that have been hired probably more at this point in time to address that academic gap that has occurred as a result of COVID. That's something our district is super aware of and Tom will speak to even more. This is one that I find really interesting as I've been talking to our community. 21 nurses have been hired with a nurse in every school. That is something that many districts cannot say. And we couldn't even say that here in Great Falls a few years ago, but our district has been really committed truly to that health in every building. It was not just OTO funds that have helped to hire these nurses though either. Um, I know I've been in conversations with Lance Boyd from the district to understand the sustainability of that. That'll be something that'll have to be wrestled with in years to come, but Lance is already looking at innovative ways to make sure we can keep as many nurses in the years to come when those OTO funds are expended because we're seeing the benefits of having that health resource in the schools. This one I'll end on as far as OTO goes, this to me just blew me away. 4,427 computers and technology upgrades. And again, that was last fall. So that's ever changing. Tom Herring in our district does a phenomenal job of really seeking to get the best that we can for the students in our district to appropriately integrate that technology into the learning and into the classroom. This is something I think is a community we really will have to look at in the years to come because we all know that devices wear out. So the things that we have been able to purchase as one-time only funds are going to have to be looked at as a community for how do we sustain those for the long haul. 
as far as keeping up to speed on all of the continuing data that Key is able to share along with our stories, feel free to join us on social media. We are on Instagram, we're very active on Facebook, and we're also on Twitter. We also have a very active blog that you can find on our webpage. And I share this because our webpage is actually being revamped right now. So this is what it looked like even a week ago. Um, if you wanna stay in touch with this though, I would definitely check it out there, get connected to us. We have information being shared all the time. But we're just about to revamp our website, as I said, focused on the students and teachers of Great Falls. So I'm giving you a little sneak peek here. Um, Amy Thompson in our community, if you're familiar with us, helped us to get pictures of our very own students and teachers all around Great Falls. This was truly a labor of love. These are newly released. You're getting a fresh peek at some of the best of the best. These are students right here in our district and bear with me if I get emotional for just a second here that to me really truly embody the joy and the commitment of why our educators do what they do. I love this page. These are teachers in our district who gave up their own Saturday mornings to come and support Key. One of them happens to be one of our kids' teachers right now. And when I mentioned to her, we were looking for teachers to do some pictures. She said to me, Jamie, we'll do anything to help what you're doing. And I said, this has nothing to do with me. This has everything to do with all of you. So I especially love this picture right over here. Um, this is a kindergartner in our district who um, is the future. This little guy is a pretty amazing kiddo. And I love, this is one of my absolute faves. They sat there and read this book about the world. So I know that it is time to turn the time over to Tom. I'm gonna step out of bounds here just a little bit though and give a shout out to all of our administrators. I know we're not in person. If we were, I would invite you all to give a quick round of applause to Tom and his team. And maybe if you're savvy on Zoom and can give a little shout out there with one of the chat features, I would invite you to do so as we hear from him tonight. There'll be time for questions. I know at the end or in the chat, I'm gonna turn it over to Tom. But please know if you're interested in helping to support with the advocacy and all the work that Great Souls Public Schools does, Key is interested in, in hearing from you and collaborating with you and doing what we can to continue to support the students here in our community. Thank you. Jamie, thank you so much for your presentation. Jamie has been just a tremendous leader for us in Key, and she also has a tremendous group of people who are supporting the work that, that she is leading. So thank you so much. And Tom, would you like to take over? You bet. Jamie, thank you so much um, for that great presentation. And it's uh, filled with so much good factual information. Jamie and her team spend so much time researching um, these messages and making sure that they're accurate, fact checking it with our team um, and, and getting just the right messaging out there. And I'm glad you ended with those uh, those pictures in a sneak preview because it just made me smile, made my day actually to look at that. We are so blessed to have a group of advocates um, like Jamie Marshall and her entire team. The Kids Education Yes has been one of those bright spots uh, in public education here in Great Falls over the years, but more recently in the last um, 10 years when we've had some tough times having that group of advocates from the community, parents and business folks out uh, telling the stories of the good work that happens in our schools. This last fall, the Treasure Our Teachers um, initiative um, with parents and business folks championing, championing uh, public educators across, well, all educators across this community. Thank you, Jamie, for what you do and what our advocates do. So I'm gonna jump into my uh, portion here and I'll kind of go through this um, relatively quickly and then have some time for some some uh, question and answer. Am I able to share my screen right now? Yes, go ahead, Tom. Okay, let me just make sure I'm sharing here. Can you all see this? Yes. Yes, okay, yes. good, okay. Well, thanks for having us. And um, Jamie did mention our administrative team. Um, and this is an incredible team of educational leaders, dedicated professionals that I am honored and at times very humbled to be around. These are fantastic individuals who live and work in this community. They're raising their children here or they have raised their children here. Um, Brian Patrick, our business and operations director, is a career educator. His children have gone through our public school system. He has taught and been an administrator 
for close to 40 years in Montana. And uh, we could not do what we do in this community without him. He is um, one of the experts on, on public school funding in Montana. Tom Herring, who's standing next to Brian. Uh, we're going from left to right here real quick. Tom Herring is our uh, tech director, information technology guru. He came from Benefice Healthcare Systems, where he was there for 20 years or so. And we were able to um, entice him to come to work for Great Falls Public Schools about five years ago, five or six years ago now. And he is phenomenal, um, just a, a tremendous asset. We were hit with a cyber attack um, last fall in the midst of COVID last year. And he and his team worked us through that whole what could have been a catastrophic event um, and restored our data systems relatively quickly. So he's a, he's a hero. Um, Carrie Dottillo is standing next to him. Carrie is our HR director. She also came from the private sector a few years ago and uh, has been with us now for four, I think four or five years as our HR director. And um, she's a phenomenal uh, asset to our team. Great thinker and very good with negotiations and working with people and navigating this whole COVID uh, benefit landscape, our insurance um, programs and benefits and so forth. She's just awesome. And then the recent challenge of trying to hire and retain people in all different sectors. She does a great job. Next to her and to my right is Ruth Euchre. She's our assistant superintendent for elementary schools. She's phenomenal. Uh, but unfortunately, she announced that she's going to be retiring um, at the end of this year. She and her husband, Drew. Drew is the principal over at Paris Gibson Education Center. They are career educators, and they will be retiring together at the end of this year. Big shoes to fill, as she has really uh, run the elementary side of this district for the last 15 years and been a principal and a teacher here for, I think, close to 27 years now. Um, to my left is Heather Hoyer. She's the assistant superintendent for secondary schools. Heather was principal at Great Falls High, a teacher there. Um, she and her husband live out in Belt. Uh, he's an educator there too. They're raising two daughters who are both educators or going into education. She's a phenomenal educational leader. Lots of energy uh, between those two very, very competent and capable women. Um, next to Heather is uh, Stephanie Schneider. Stephanie's a newcomer to our team. She replaced Dave Crum as the Great Falls Public Schools Foundation Executive Director. Uh, Stephanie came from the nonprofit world and she's been a huge asset to our team. Um, all of these folks sit on the cabinet with me. We meet every Tuesday for two hours and she just brings a whole another dynamic to our team too. Um, and she's doing a great job with the foundation. And uh, last um, person on the right here is Lance Boyd. He is our student services um, director. He replaced Dale Lambert last year. And Lance has been a huge asset to our team. He's principal at Longfellow Elementary in Sunnyside and uh, has a wealth of knowledge in special education title programs, federal programming and grants. He's been, uh, he and Brian have been the brains behind managing all of this federal money through um, the CARES Act that's come into the school district. And he's a phenomenal educational leader. So I'm really blessed to have this team of people. This community needs to know uh, what these folks do. And so I'm gonna talk a little bit about that later on uh, when I get through this, but they're just awesome people. Um, our school district is one of eight AA districts in Montana. We're the second largest district in the state of Montana. Um, population wise, we have about 10,250 kids. Um, I am the 11th superintendent in the history of the school district and um, just honored and pleased to be able to serve in this capacity. Here's my third year as your superintendent. Um, our mission and vision is uh, pretty clear that our, our vision is that all students, all children will be engaged in learning today for life tomorrow. And our mission is that we will successfully educate those students in order to, uh, to help them or have them navigate their futures. And uh, that's a tall order. It look, looks like a simple statement, but that's a tall order. The engagement um, with students throughout COVID has been a huge challenge uh, last week. We knew that when we went to remote learning again, there were gonna be a ton of kids who were not engaged on a daily basis or not engaged to their, to their uh, to the fullest capacity. So 
Um, I want to talk real quickly about the impact that COVID has had on our schools, um, what we're doing in terms of recovery um, for that or from the COVID or on the ongoing effects of COVID and the recovery of that, and then the future of Great Falls Public Schools and some innovations that Jamie had alluded to, and I'll hit on some of the funding and the spending here for ARPA. I, I just want to show you today's graph. This is just, we, we came back from the holiday break right before the holidays, our uh, numbers in, in terms of infection were the lowest that they had been um, all year. And, um, and we were thrilled to death that we were going to go into the holiday season at a very low point here back in, in December. And we came back after the break and this variant has uh, just been ripping through our, our communities and in our, in our country and so forth. And almost immediately, January 3rd, 4th, 5th, the numbers started skyrocketing. Um, and last week, um, they, they hit a peak uh, that, that wiped out a bunch of our uh, teaching staff and our support staff. And so uh, our team got together quickly and uh, looked at the forecasts for uh, the infections in terms of staff and determined that we were not gonna be able to sustain this and, and keep our schools open um, and adequately staff our classrooms. And so, as many of you know, we had to make a decision to move quickly to remote learning and provide support for students at home. That sends a, a, a reverberation throughout the entire community because parents have to quickly decide how they're gonna take care of their children and, and childcare and so forth. So um, our hands organization uh, stepped up and we opened up some, um, child care throughout the week for our healthcare uh, professionals at Benefis and uh, the clinic and so forth. But um, again, it was a, a pivot to remote learning that we didn't want to have to, to address. We met over the weekend this last weekend, looked at the numbers and decided that we were gonna have enough staff coming back on Tuesday uh, to be able to open schools. It's been a challenge all week to try to keep those classrooms filled with um, teachers who are healthy and certified to teach and so forth. Uh, substitute numbers have, have kind of ebbed and flowed as well because they're, they're sick and uh, they're not able to come to work. So um, that's the picture right now for COVID. Um, the experts tell us that this particular variant, variant should be um, kind of peaking here in the next couple of weeks into February and then hopefully tapering off again. So uh, we're trying to keep the ship moving um, despite these current challenges and they are immense. And it's not any different than some of our restaurants and businesses that are not able to stay open in the regular uh, hours or have to close certain days of the week because they just don't have the staffing. But we're talking about children and not food or clothing or whatever. So this is, this is highly impacting our, um, our community at this point again. Um, so we're having to deal with that. Um, there were some questions asked about some of the um, diversity within our district, uh, especially regarding uh, the uh, homeless situation in Great Falls. Um, we, we report um, that in this particular slide is not accurate for, for this year. This was last year's. I won't have a total for the year until the year end, but I got our current numbers today. Um, our homeless number of students in Great Falls Public Schools is 391 at the mid-year. Um, and that number continues to increase as we go through the year as things get um, more difficult for some families, um, especially in the wintertime, uh, those numbers are not good. And so we um, have to utilize uh, all the resources we have available to us in the community to address the homeless situation with our students. And I can talk more about that in, in a minute. We have allocated some of our federal monies to enhancing the work that we do um, with our homeless students. Some of the uh, CARE Act or COVID money that's come into the district can be earmarked to address the effects on homeless children and students. So we have been um, targeting that in terms of some of our relief. Um, I want to talk just real quickly about the enrollment in our school district um, because the, the, some of the adverse effects of COVID uh, last year was a decline or decrease in our enrollment. So we have to report to the state of Montana twice each year our enrollment numbers. 
And we do that in October and again in February. The October count for this last October for our enrollment was 10,217 students. And the question is, how does that compare to last year when we were in remote learning and COVID was running rampant? Um, but, but more importantly, how does that compare to 2019 pre-COVID in October of 2019? So uh, if we look at last year, last year's enrollment compared to this year's, we're up 179 students this year over last year enrolled in the district, which is a good thing because a lot of our funding, um, the majority of our funding is dependent upon our enrollment numbers. So in over the years, we've experienced decreasing enrollment or, or static enrollment. And that's been part of our funding equation and challenges is to try to keep adequate funding rolling in when our enrollment is declining. In a large district like this, it, it causes challenges. So we're up 179 students over last year. This, uh, if we look to 2019, pre-COVID, we're up 60 students over that year. So again, we're uh, headed in the right direction. But the, the difference in those two numbers, we believe that last year during COVID and remote learning, there were quite a few parents who chose to keep their kindergarten children home one more year and not enroll them um, until this year. So that that could, it could have been uh, part of that um, uh, factor there. As far as the increase in the number of employees, we usually have around 1,800, uh, somewhere around 1,800 full and part-time employees. Uh, this year, we are up uh, 28 employees over where we were last year and uh, 7.1 additional teachers different uh, difference from last year. We had to hire a bunch of new teachers last year to deal with the remote learning as well as fill some of the gaps in our classrooms, but we are up an additional 7.1 teachers this year uh, to be able to address some of the remediation in the work um, that's before us. So we have a robust strategic plan that dictates how we're going to spend these dollars and the three areas of focus for our school district have been over the last 10 years, uh, first of all, healthy, safe and secure schools. And so our strategic plans that deal with how do we address the environmental health and safety factors within our schools, a lot of the ARPA dollars or the American Rescue Plan money, it's called the ARPA funds or the CARE Act money, people call it both of those things. And you'll hear the term ESSER too, which I won't get into that acronym, but uh, the federal money that's coming into our school district, um, a lot of it initially was earmarked to address the health and safety standards in our schools that we had to ramp up. Environmental concerns like air handling units, the uh, personal protection equipment, sanitation, those kinds of things. So that's been the number one focus, obviously, of, of, of a lot of our work is making sure that we have healthy and um, safe schools for folks to be in. And then addressing the emotional needs of our kids. And Jamie alluded to this, we've hired five or six therapists, licensed professional mental health workers to work within our school district to address the social emotional learning needs of our students um, as our employees. And we've enhanced our partnerships with some of this funding with Alluvion, the Center for Mental Health and AWARE. Um, we're also working with the Alliance for Youth in dealing with at-risk children um, in that regard too. And then um, our, our second goal and our second focal area within the strategic plan is student achievement. And we know that there have been adverse effects of COVID on student achievement. Um, the interruption of children's learning for an entire fourth quarter in 2020 when they were all remote and we didn't have much time to plan for instruction in that regard. We know that a lot of kids fell behind uh, some of them were on the cusp of not doing well as it was. And then in the fourth quarter for them to not be in school with their teachers and their peers was a huge, uh, hugely adverse effect on them. So as we got back into school last year and planned for summer uh, programming and so forth, a lot of our um, American Rescue Plan money, the federal funds coming to us, um, we're, we're are, are being channeled to uh, in uh, addressing the remediation of our students, both during the school year and the school day, but after school, before school, and during the summer. So lots of challenges there as well. Um, 
due to the adverse effects of COVID. And then just making sure that we're good stewards and we're accountable. Federal requirements and state requirements for reporting, as well as um, our commitment and obligation to this community to be transparent about our uh, funding and how we steward these resources is uh, something we have committed to. And so I'm gonna just show you some numbers here real quick as well in that regard. So this year, um, this year in the, in the year, school year 21-22, uh, we have been um, utilizing $10 million in one-time only money, OTO, one-time only money, that must be expended by the fall of this next year. Um, we have until 2023 to expend these funds. Um, and they, they have to be uh, dedicated to addressing specific aspects of the adverse effects of COVID. We can hire staff to do that. And um, a large percentage of this $10 million is, is, is earmarked and has been utilized for hiring staff in different areas. It also can be used to offset the cost of staffing and the adverse effects of enrollment on us. So the enrollment deficits from last year that we experienced can be made up this year through backfilling some of our deficit with, um, with uh, these federal funds. So I'll show you in a minute um, what that looks like. But in, in business operations, student services, the hiring of therapists in our elementary and secondary education programs, in technology and in educational supports um, for part-time folks, we've added staff, but these are one-time or two-year only contracts. So we haven't hired teachers that we're gonna have to support ongoing um, after these federal funds go away. Um, we've hired them on two-year only contracts because we don't, we know that when these funds um, are, are expended and when the timeframes uh, come to fruition, we're not gonna be able to support that additional staff with our general funds. So we've hired these folks on one-time only monies um, and their contracts are, are reflective of that. We've added some classified staff for supports. We've hired more substitutes and we've added in instructional um, uh, aids and those kinds of things as well as additional custodial help and, and so forth. These are the different cat categories and dollar amounts. This is as of um, pre-holiday here real quickly. For uh, the $10 million budgeted for this year in these different categories, business operations, buildings and grounds, music and art, human resources, special ed, elementary ed, secondary ed, informational technology, uh, extra, benefits um, and indirect costs, uh, these categorical areas are where we have been spending money this year to date. Now this business operations amount, this allocated budget, this $813,400 is the money that I was referencing a few minutes ago that can be used to offset the rollover costs of our budget this year and the increase in that due to our uh, enrollment drop last year. So we can utilize this money and then um, from our general fund, transfer whatever surplus is left over to next year's budget. We can carry that over in our interlocal funds. So uh, the legislature gave us and the ARPA funds gave us the ability to do that this, this time around. So that's where that 813,000 is coming from. Um, the 4 million in elementary education, the 1.4 million in secondary ed and inf information technology 2.9 is all dealing with um, remediation, summer programming, additional uh, technology to get into everybody's hands um, and, and the training and so forth for our teachers and our students. So that's a breakdown of those one-time only um, monies for this year. Next year, um, we'll be looking at the third bucket of ARPA funds. There's another $20 million coming uh, or earmarked for Great Falls Public Schools. And out of that $20 million, half of that money, about 10 million is being used for infrastructure. Uh, before uh, the holidays this last fall, we had a um, work session with our school board um, 
and we were addressing the um, facilities needs of our district um, in terms of revamping some of our um, uh, air handling units at schools that were not um, in the facilities, uh, facilities plan for the bond. And so I think there are three or four schools that, that are earmarked for um, air handling units and um, HVAC systems, Valley View, um, Riverview, uh, a couple of other schools up on the north end, and then uh, an overcrowding situation over at CMR or at um, Meadowlark School. So adding some additional classroom space over there. Uh, the ARPA funds for next year will be coming, uh, will be utilized for some of that infrastructure work. About half of that 20 million will be used to up, upgrade th those things. And then the other uh, remaining portion will go into these other categor categorical areas. That federal money will need to be spent out by the fall of 2024. So I'll give you an update next time, next year on how we're doing with that money. Here's what it looks like graphically. I'm gonna keep moving here because time is getting short. Um, some of the things that we've been challenged with is making sure that we continue to support our military families that are coming in and out of Great Falls, uh, Malmstrom Air Force Base, about 10% of our student population is military associated. So making sure um, that we take good care of those families as they're coming in and out of the, um, the community from other places. Uh, Lori Elementary, North Middle School, CM Russell High School, Morningside Elementary, and then Principal Kim Ray over at Morningside now and Joe Furta, counselor at Great Falls High School have all been recognized in the state of Montana for Purple Star Awards, uh, a few of them last year and some this year. Uh, the state of Montana is now recognizing schools and educators and people who are doing incredible work at assisting our military families in being successful in transition in and out of Montana. So kudos to them, uh, lots of challenges to ensure that 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 goes well. Our facilities action plan is coming to fruition here. The, the levy, a bond issue that was approved by the voters in 2016 for close to $100 million. Thank you to the help of Key and our community to get that done. That's coming to fruition this spring. We'll have expended most of those bond uh, funds by um, May of this year. And then we're going to have a celebration and a thank you to the community for that. And then Brian and I are working together on putting together the next um, facilities plan for the next three to five years. Um, and then just some upcoming events that I wanna highlight, some innovation that's happening here. We've had to, like other businesses, change our marketing and recruitment strategies to try to hire high quality folks and keep them um, in Great Falls Public Schools. So we have a job fair going on January 28th up here at the school district office from one till three. Becky Nelson, who works for Great Falls Public Schools and Carrie Ditello, our HR director, have been out just, um, just pounding the pavement, trying to find good folks who wanna work with our school district and then doing some really cool things to um, incentivize and thank our teachers who are um, new to us. We've had some events going on, Brush Crazy, we had an event, the rescue mission over the holidays. I think we attempted to take them on a hike and do some fun stuff up at uh, the sluice box earlier this year, but lots of things going on to try to recruit and retain good people. Teachers are at a premium across the country. There are not a lot of young people um, these days thinking that going into education is such a great, great idea, unfortunately, but there are some and we want them. Uh, we want them here in Great Falls. Um, we hired, I think, uh, close to 100 new teachers last year. And so uh, we're going to the colleges and universities and talking to these young people who will be graduating this spring. And February 11th through the 13th, we're going to hold an event here uh, where we'll host these young folks. I think there's about 24, 25 of them right now. Um, it's called the High Voltage Weekend in the Electric City. Uh, beginning on Friday night, February 11th, down at the Dark Horse, Celtic Cowboy. And then events going on all weekend long. We've had sponsors from the business community are helping us with meals and uh, guest speakers that will be talking to these young folks. And then we'll be interviewing and hopefully hiring a, a bunch of them and realtors talking to them about buying houses here in Great Falls. And I'm sure Jerry Jennings there putting a card in their hand to join the Wilderness Society or um, Great Falls Rising and 
Yeah, so we're excited about that. Then real quickly, I am launching a, a new thing called the Great Falls Public Schools Citizens Academy. Thank you to Jamie for the encouragement to think about this. Uh, other entities, the Sheriff's Department, Fire Department have done this kind of stuff, but we're gonna offer citizens a behind the scenes look at how Great Falls Public Schools works. There are six sessions, they kick off on February 3rd. They'll be at different locations across the district. Different people from our uh, organization will be highlighted there as well as some of our partners talking about different topical areas dealing with uh, our public school system here. And then at the end in April, we'll give them all a certificate of, of completion and feed them well and say thank you to them. And hopefully it's a, a, a new way and a different way to engage our community and give them a behind the scenes look, answer questions and try to uh, help folks. And then on February 2nd, workforce development uh, opportunity with the Great Falls Chamber of Commerce, the Montana State Chamber of Commerce and Great Falls Public Schools co-sponsoring the first Great Falls Community Development Day where we're going to launch the Young Entrepreneurs Program. This is an innovative program for sixth through 12th grade students that the um, National Chamber of Commerce, Montana Chamber, as well as now the Great Falls Chamber of Commerce is endorsing to engage young people in um, all kinds of aspects of thinking like an entrepreneur, whether no matter what business they go into or what their vocation might be, having that entrepreneurial and innovative mindset and how you foster that in young people. Chamber sponsoring it. We're going to have a, uh, a luncheon and a keynote speaker. Um, for that from the Montana State Chamber starts at 11 o'clock at Heritage Hall up at the college. And that's for the business and, and, um, and, and the, the community membership for the first hour and a half, two hours. And then we move over to Great Falls High School in the afternoon and have a session training session for our teachers where we highlight the Young Entrepreneurs Program. So we're excited about that. And um, yeah, so the future for Great Falls Public Schools is just hiring and retaining high quality employees, enhancing our community partnerships with United Way, the Chamber, GFDA, Malmstrom Air Force Base, City of Great Falls, our higher uh, education institutions in Great Falls, focusing on workforce development and graduating young people who are citizenship ready. Uh, again, our focus on health and well being of students and staff our facilities and sustainable funding. We've got a legislative session coming up again, future levies. There's some initiatives on the ballot right now. I know that could um, alter the way, um, you know, taxes funnel into schools and those are those could be challenging and problematic. So we have to look at continued ways to um, fund public schools and sustain funding for public schools in Montana. And it, it all boils down to revenue and how we generate that maintaining and enhancing our community connections and our partnerships, like I said, and uh, leading some innovation and change in a new era for public education, learning some things from this COVID experience and, uh, and, and not continuing with the same old way we've done business, but learning from that and enhancing what we do. So with that, um, I'm gonna shut up and let y'all <laughs> ask some questions if you'd like to. I hope I hit some of the topical areas that you wanted me to. I know there was a question about transformational learning that came up in the chat. Um, transformational learning, real quickly, um, came out of uh, the legislature two years ago. It was two, two sessions ago, excuse me. And Lou Jones um, kind of championed that bill. Lou has been in and out of Great Falls working with us. Our team has taken full advantage of the Transformational Learning um, Act, as well as the Advanced Opportunities Act, and what those monies do, their grants that we, we were able, successfully able to um, tap into, is provide funding to offset the cost for students to get their um, pathways towards college or career personalized. And so uh, we write individual education plans for students um, that really transform the way they are learning. Kind of like Paris Education Center provides an alternative pathway to a diploma, but this is for all students. And so Heather Hoyer has been heading that up with her high school principals and so forth. And, uh, and then the Advanced Opportunities Act reimburses parents for the costs of things like um, dual credit for tests that kids have to take for um, 
you know, the, the, the military, the ASVAB test, if there's a, a fee for that, um, welding equipment, if they're going to the college to do welding, there's uh, a reimbursement opportunity through those grant funds through the Advanced Opportunity Act for, for um, ensuring that students who don't have the ways and means can get there. And um, it's, it's been great. Our district has been a leader in the state of Montana in terms of taking advantage of these things. So looking forward to the new uh, medical school that's being built up at Benefis and partnering with them as well as our colleges on uh, medical career pathways for our students. So more to come about that. Excited about the future. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Tom. That was a great update on what's going on. I mean, right to the minute. Um, I'm wondering, first of all, I'm really sorry to hear about the Euchres retiring. They've been you, a, you an are. Essential, yeah, <laughs> That's an a essential part of our school system for a yeah. long, long time. Very true. Um, what about uh, seniors and looking at colleges and scholarships and so forth? Has that been interrupted or has that been pretty well taken smoothly? Well, I, I haven't seen the numbers from, from this year, Jerry, but I know that um, those numbers are down across the board. Um, some students are taking, or did, especially last year, um, take a, uh, a year to maybe do some different things during COVID to, uh, instead of going on to college. And so there was a surplus of scholarship money uh, that was left on the table in some regards. I think Stephanie uh, Schneider reported to us that that we didn't have the same um, requests for for scholarships uh, for colleges last year. This year, I haven't seen those numbers yet. I don't know that they're in um, yet. But yeah, we have seen a little bit of a downturn in terms of uh, college scholarship applications and and uh, kids saying that they want to go to college right away out of high school. So I think that's going to be um, I don't, I don't know if that's a, a trend or if that's just uh, momentary while we're dealing with this COVID thing. Um, I don't know, but we're, we're watching it. When, when you're in touch with the other uh, superintendents of the AA schools or any of the schools, are they finding these same trends? We haven't talked about the college going rates lately. Um, uh, maybe Heather has been talking with her colleagues across the AA's about it. I haven't talked with the superintendents lately. We've been inundated with some other distractions um, more recently, as you probably know. And so, uh, but I, I have no problem asking um, that question. We have a Wednesday Zoom with all the AA soups. I'll put that on my list of things to ask them next week and I'll get back to you, Jerry. I'll send you an email with what, what the consensus is across the AA's. Well, that would be great, Tom, because if yeah. they aren't finding it or they're finding it to a greater degree, it would be interesting to see what people are doing or are not doing and could be doing better. So I appreciate that. You bet. Thank are you. there any? Tom, are, oh. Tom, can I just add, Jerry, from the foundation standpoint, I know Stephanie recently reported that they are doing a little deeper dive to an, analyze, especially with our native population, mm -hmm. uh, looking at why so many of those scholarships, not just last year, but historically have gone not quite as well and not been accessed. So they are actually delving a little deeper into some of that right now as well to try and assess if that is strictly COVID or what are some other things we can do across the board, but also especially with our native population. Well, that's good to know, Jamie. I could certainly call her and, and uh, talk to her about it. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have any other questions? This has been not only terrific, but it's been very complete. Um, any other questions? I'm not seeing any in the chat room. Well, if not, we really appreciate the time that you two have put into this. It's been terrific. And I, all I can do is say thank you from everybody because it's, it's important to catch up and it's important for us to know, and we can tell our colleagues and families and neighbors. So Tom and Jamie, do you have anything else you wanna to add? Tom, I actually wanted to ask, do any of the other AA's have a Citizens Academy of sorts? Or are we kind of the first to lead on that? You know, I, I haven't heard any of them talking about that. And so I'm gonna ask that question as well. I think somebody asked me that last week, has this been done in any of the other AA districts? Um, you don't know that it has. And so I'll, I'll ask around next week those two questions. Um, 
you know, the other quick thing that I, I did want to share is just the uh, appreciation for our school board and the leadership in our district and the people who have been elected to, um, to govern our schools. I see Nathan's face up on the screen again, and I saw Mark Finnicum here and, and others. We have four trustee positions that are up for re, uh, re-election this spring, and I want to remind your group and your organization how important it is that we um, that we elect people that are really truly um, well-intended in terms of their, their uh, support for public schools and so forth. So just an encouragement for those that are listening and so forth that we, those seats are, are um, gonna be up for re-election um, or maybe there'll be some vacancies. I don't know at this point for sure, but just uh, please use your good judgment. <laughs> Thanks for mentioning that, Tom, because we've been talking about that lately and uh, we really do need to have people who are very supportive of our public schools because we've had very good school board members in the past and let's continue with that. I'm glad that Jamie mentioned the Citizens Academy. How does one access that or become awesome. part of that? Well, it was supposed to close, the registration was supposed to close online today, but I asked um, Becky or um, Cindy Gordon, my administrative assistant to keep it open one more day because I was gonna, promote it here. Uh, I think we have a couple of seats left um, and we're asking people to commit to all six sessions. So if you're interested in the Citizens Academy, you can go to our website. There's some information about it there and you can fill out the application online um, and submit it that way. Or you can call Cindy Gordon tomorrow morning at my office, 268-6001 and we can still get you registered. Tom, I just popped the link in the chat too. Oh, so if people want to click on it really fast before we sign off, yeah. it'll take you straight to the registration page. I have to give a shout out to Mark Kappas. We were actually doing a key presentation and he made the suggestion um, to me to have key help think about it. And so I took it back to Tom and Tom just ran with this. It has been really a neat thing to watch our district think about and develop. So thank you, Tom. Great idea. And I hope it I hope it engages our community differently than we've been able to in the past and, and uh, help with that. So. That's great. Well, you know, most of us feel that the school system in Great Falls is terrific. And I won't say everybody because I know that you get you get flack from some, but um, we've had children in this school district since 1974, kids and grandkids and they've all done well, they've all had good teachers, and we have really appreciated our attachment and, and um, activities with the Great Falls Public Schools. So thanks to the two of you, we really cherish and treasure the things that you've said tonight. And thanks to everybody who's on the Zoom. Um, keep up the good work, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll be in touch soon. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Jerry. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks, Jimmy. Thanks, everyone. Have a good evening. You too.